Thank you for joining today's employee training. The following recording clip between customer Mr. Newton and our delivery man Leibniz will show you what customer behaviors are unacceptable. Mr. Newton, where do you live? I am on my way with your Hawaii pizza. I live in the northeastern of the town. Go north one mile and then go east for another mile. I am waiting for you right here. That is very far, Mr. Newton. You do know that we charge by delivery distance, right? The delivery fee will be $20 for a two-mile delivery. You must be kidding. That's ridiculous. Okay, do as I say and I will save six bucks on the delivery fee. Just a reminder, Mr. Newton. As a German, I do things straightforward. I can only make 90 degree turns. Excellent, lad. Suppose you make a right turn after the first half mile to the north. After a half mile to the east, turn left to go north for another half mile. At the end, turn right to finish the last half mile. Mr. Newton, I don't think it makes any differences. I know. What if you make a right turn after the first quarter mile, then turn left after another quarter mile to the east? I don't think it violates your 90 degree angle turn German rule, right? No, it doesn't, but you know I invented calculus before. You can't play with me on this. Well, here comes my invention. I want you to make a right turn after an infinitely small distance to the north, then drive for an infinitely small distance to the east before turning north again. Keep doing this, and your trajectory will be infinitely close to the diagonal line from the shop to my place, which is about 1.4 miles. My logic still works, Mr. Newton, I can move the infinitely small parts to the original paths and the complete length is 2, not square root of 2. Are you suggesting that two paths that are infinitely close to each other have different lengths, Mr. Leibniz? Mr. Leibniz? Das ist verrückt. Was glaubst du, wer du bist? Okay, that is enough. Ati Galileo S. Pizza. We protect our employees against mathematical bullying from customers. Let me explain why Mr. Newton's argument is problematic. Mr. Newton proposed a so-called paradox called the Stairkase paradox. According to his logic, standard 345 Pythagorean triangle is a longest edge of length 7, not 5, which is obviously wrong. As a citizen of the math town, you should be fully aware of the importance of the definitions in any conversation. Mr. Newton secretly replaced the definition of length at the last second in the conversation. When they originally said length, they meant the summation of all segments of Leibniz's trajectory, no matter how small each segment is. This implicit assumption is also accepted by Mr. Newton at the beginning. But, when Mr. Newton said that the distance between our shop and this place is square root of 2 miles, he means the shortest distance between two points in the Euclidean sense, whose name comes from Euclid, who also lives in this town. There is a fundamental difference between these two definitions. The length of the trajectory is defined in the so-called taxicab matrix like a taxi moving around in the city of Manhattan. The distance between two points is the Euphoria constant, independent of the specific trajectory. This remains true no matter how small each segment is. A diagonal line is never the same as two perpendicular segments. In another word, you can squeeze two trajectories as close as you want, but the difference of lengths remain unchanged. You are right, Mr. Galileo. I was just playing with Mr. Leibniz. Let me prove that what you said is true using calculus that I created before Mr. Leibniz did. What the? How did you get into our Zoom meeting? It doesn't matter, Mr. Galileo. If you treat the path from your shop to my home as a function in the coordinate system, your shop is a coordinate of 0, 0, while my place is at 1, 1. We can draw an arbitrary non-decreasing function fx to connect these two dots. My suggestion of the diagonal line is merely a special case. Following my sincere suggestion to Mr. Lebanese, we have small partitions of zigzag segments. Now, if we look at one particular L-shaped partition, the trajectory length is given by this expression. This is true because the distance in the taxicab sense, as mentioned by Mr. Galileo earlier, 
is just the sum of the horizontal displacement and the vertical displacement. Next, according to the mean value theorem, which states that there must exist an x star between x, y, and x, i minus 1, such that the following equation is true, which means the trajectory length can be written as the following. By setting the partition length infinitely small, we have the total length. The path I suggested is basically fx equals x, so the derivative is just 1. You substitute it into the expression, you get 2. It is not surprising that the result is always 2 for any function, as the antiderivative of a function's derivative is just the function itself, isn't it, Mr. Leibniz? Finally, if I suggested an arc path, then fx equals square root of 1 minus x minus 1 squared, substitute it into the expression, s is still 2. This is the famous pi equals to 4 paradox. You are welcome. Mr. Newton, that is enough. I guess Jupiter is not a good Zoom meeting password. Now, get out. Leibniz, I think you worked on this at the early days of calculus, right? Yes, Mr. Galileo, you know I am something of a mathematiker in myself. I think so, Mr. Leibniz. I have one last question for you. If you know so much about calculus, why don't you correct Mr. Newton in the first place? Well, you know Mr. Galileo. I had some really good beer I got from the Oktoberfest. So I had a few small cups before working that day. You know. Beer is really good. Lei è licenziato, signor Leibniz. Following my sincere suggestion to Mr. Leibniz, we have small partitions of zigzag segments. Now, if we look at one particular L-shaped partition, the trajectory length is given by this expression. This is true because the distance in the taxi cab sense, as mentioned by Mr. Galileo earlier, is just the sum of the horizontal displacement and the vertical displacement. Next. According to the mean value theorem, which states that there must exist an x star between x i and x i minus 1, such that the following is true. Finally, if I suggested an arc path, then fx equals square root of 1 minus x minus 1 squared. Substitute it into the expression, s is still 2. This is the famous pi equals to 4 paradox. You are welcome. Mr. Newton, that is enough.